Brace yourself for the riveting tale of Rhoda Williams, the teenage genius who thought driving under the influence was a stellar idea. Our protagonist, fresh off her MIT acceptance, decides to celebrate her intellectual prowess by mixing alcohol with a joyride. Because, you know, responsible life choices. While cruising at warp speed and enjoying the sweet tunes of the radio, Rhoda learns that a brand new planet with its very own moon has rudely popped into our solar system uninvited. Scientists are scratching their heads, and the radio cheerfully suggests that everyone should just look north to catch a glimpse of this unexpected celestial gatecrasher. But fear not, Rhoda's got this. She squints out of her car window like a drunken astronomer, only to introduce herself to a lovely family parked nearby. The kid names his robot Bob, the parents share a hearty laugh, and life is grand. Until, of course, Rhoda crashes into them, turning the heartwarming family scene into a chaotic disaster. Our brilliant MIT-bound scholar has a bit of a fender bender, injuring herself and leaving a little boy sprawled lifelessly on the asphalt. But hey, who needs driver's ed when you've got a planet party going on? Cut to Rhoda behind bars, her dreams of MIT and astrophysics temporarily on hold. Fast forward four years, and Earth 2 is now photobombing our view, looking suspiciously like Earth's identical twin. Scientists have been attempting to shoot at a text, but decoding extraterrestrial emojis is no easy feat. Some scholars even believe Earth 2 is just a cosmic copycat reflecting our own awesomeness. Now, our reformed post-prison Rhoda emerges into the world, where her parents greet her with open arms and a generous dose of awkward silence. The family chat takes a bizarre turn as Rhoda's brother informs her about an essay contest sponsored by a millionaire space enthusiast named Keith Harding. The prize? A free ticket for the first joyride to Earth 2. Because nothing says redeem yourself like a space expedition. Rhoda, feeling like a changed woman who can't stand her old room, gazes out the window and is absolutely captivated by the sight of the twin Earths. Inspired, she dives into United Sape Ventures, the very program her brother rambled on about. To snag that golden ticket, all she needs to do is pen an essay on why she deserves a one-way trip to Earth 2. Because crashing cars and serving time are mere stepping stones to interplanetary adventures. Brace yourself for the heart-wrenching drama as Rhoda, clearly an expert in life choices, stares at her laptop like it's a profound oracle, deciding that typing is just too mainstream. Instead, she elevates herself to the echelons of attic dwellers, declaring it her newfound kingdom. Behold, the majestic transition from an MIT-bound prodigy to an attic queen with a mattress for a throne. She adorns her majestic domain with a picture of the night sky, because nothing says, I've hit rock bottom like celestial decor in the attic. Next day, our heroine, feeling like a butterfly breaking free from the cocoon of her past, graces the employment office with her presence. Alas, MIT is but a distant dream, for she's now an ex-convict, and other colleges shun her like she's carrying a contagious academic plague. Fear not, the lady at the office offers her a job, but Rhoda, the job connoisseur, insists on a gig that requires minimal human interaction, Enter the illustrious role of a janitor at her alma mater, because clearly scrubbing floors is the pinnacle of post-prison careers. Lo and behold, Rhoda doesn't hate her cleaning tasks. Maybe cleaning up the pieces of her broken dreams makes her feel better. It's been precisely four years since the accident. Rhoda visits the intersection where the tragic incident happened and looks around. Surprise, surprise. A man she thought she had killed emerges from a car, living proof that miracles can happen. Turns out, the man is John Burroughs, a real survivor who even keeps a robot toy as a shrine for his deceased son. Rhoda, ever the detective, rushes home to play Sherlock on her laptop. Discovering John's tragic backstory, she decides to meet him. Picture this, a snowy night, a messy living room, and a guilt-ridden Rhoda, spying on John through his window. Overcome with remorse, she decides that the best way to cope is to undress and lie in the snow, because clearly, Hypothermia is the key to self-forgiveness. The screen goes black, leaving us to ponder the profound symbolism of freezing one's fingers blue while staring at Earth 2. In a twist that surprises absolutely no one, someone rescues Rhoda from her icy demise. Fingers injured but miraculously alive, she's back on her feet. Determined to make amends, she finally decides to apply for a ticket to Earth 2. In her essay, she argues that since madmen, outcasts, and orphans were the guinea pigs of the past, being a felon makes her the prime candidate for this cosmic experiment. Feeling accomplished, 
She heads to the grocery store for celebratory candies, only to bump into her high school boyfriend. He's graduated to business school and flaunts a new girlfriend, making Rhoda feel like a janitorial Cinderella without a candy-stocked pumpkin. Still not satisfied, Rhoda embarks on the heroic quest to apologize to John, because nothing says redemption like revisiting your vehicular manslaughter crime scene. Oh, the tangled web of deceit that Rhoda weaves in her quest for redemption. Knocking on John's door, she decides that honesty is overrated. Instead of confessing to being the family wrecker, she opts for a stellar cover story. A maid from the apparently elusive Maiden Haven Cleaning Services, here to sprinkle some cleaning magic for a free trial. Because nothing says, I accidentally killed your family, like free maid services. John, living in what must be the filthiest haven known to mankind, graciously accepts the offer. Little does he know, Rhoda's cleaning skills are as polished as her ability to bury the truth. She investigates his space gear while wielding a mop, because cleanliness and cosmic curiosity go hand in hand. Weeks pass, and Rhoda, instead of coming clean, decides to use her newfound hobby of housekeeping as a cover-up. She practices the art of honesty in front of the mirror, but alas, the nerves get the best of her every time she approaches John's door. So, she continues her role as the cleaning superhero, without ever revealing her accidental killer alter ego. In a delightful turn of events, Rhoda and her family tune in to a live broadcast of a scientist trying to chat up someone on Earth 2. Surprise, surprise! It turns out to be a mirror image of the scientist herself. Same name, same birthday, same childhood memories, the whole shebang. Cue the global awe, because nothing screams mind-blowing revelation, like a mirror Earth with matching inhabitants. As the world spins into a cosmic debate, physicists toss around theories like confetti. Earth 2, they claim, is our identical twin, a mirror planet with identical people. The possibility of meeting and conversing with our exact duplicates becomes the topic of interplanetary gossip. Meanwhile, John and Rhoda, the dynamic duo of cleaning and space science, bond over video games and telescope sessions. Because nothing builds a relationship like shared interests in astronomy and extraterrestrial doppelgangers. However, as their cosmic connection blossoms, John's skepticism about the impending expedition to Earth-2 surfaces. According to him, mankind isn't ready to accept that they're not the universe's VIPs anymore. The nerve. Things take an awkward turn when John discovers Rhoda washed a sweater that belonged to his late wife. Cue the agitated husband and an abrupt eviction notice for our unintentional home wrecker. But, wait, there's more drama on the airwaves. A radio program warns about the potential dangers of Earth-2 speculating on interplanetary wars fueled by similar weaponry and suspicious nature. Because nothing spices up a potential cosmic catastrophe like a good old radio debate. Rhoda returns home and finds John's car parked there. He's come to say sorry for his earlier behavior and she forgives him. Then, he asks her to go somewhere with him. They end up at a university auditorium, where John gives her a private concert using a saw to play a new piece of music. They feel a stronger connection afterward and go back to John's home. Things progress, and they end up having a adult stuffs. Later, John opens up about the accident and his long coma. Rhoda still keeps her involvement a secret. When she gets home, her brother informs her that the spaceflight people have called. Rhoda calls them back, and to her surprise, millionaire Keith Harding answers. He informs her that she won the essay competition and is chosen to voyage to Earth 2. Rhoda is ecstatic and shares the news with John. Although he praises her at first, he eventually asks her not to go, as they now have a good relationship, and he sees a future with her, which scares her. Realizing she can't hide the truth, Rhoda finally admits that she caused the accident. John, understandably, is not thrilled. He politely asks her to leave, proving that honesty isn't always the best policy. Returning home, Rhoda is greeted by a media circus on her doorstep. The news about her winning the lottery ticket to space has spread like wildfire and reporters are digging up her past faster than a dog burying a bone. Thankfully, Daddy Dearest comes to the rescue, shielding Rhoda from the vultures. United Space Ventures delivers the coveted ticket to Earth 2, and Rhoda is on Cloud 9, or should we say, Cloud 2. But wait, there's a twist. A few days later, Rhoda watches a scientist on TV. He talks about a theory that the people on Earth 2 had the same kind of life as us until it became visible to our planet. Four years ago, after that happened, people's lives changed a bit, affecting their actions and maybe their future. Now, Rhoda thinks that her mirror self on the other planet might not be the one who caused the accident. With this newfound revelation, she rushes to John's house 
breaking and entering like a true amateur detective. Instead of a warm welcome, she gets a hostile greeting and a good old-fashioned chokehold from John. Ah, romance in the air. However, Rhoda manages to spill the beans about the theory she heard, claiming that the accident might be an alternate reality glitch. In a stunning twist, she leaves the golden ticket for John, suggesting he might find his long-lost family on Earth too. Fast forward, Rhoda's back to her normal life, mentally healthier after her bizarre apology tour. The space shuttle is gearing up for liftoff, and lo and behold, John accepts her offer. He's headed to Earth 2, leaving us to wonder if he'll reunite with his fictional family or find himself in an interplanetary soap opera. Four months after the initial shuttle launch, Rhoda is on her way home from work when she's shocked to come face to face with her Earth 2 counterpart. The movie concludes with the two identical Rhodas staring at each other. Because what's a mind-bending finale without a doppelganger showdown?